Um, I feel like now we're in a good place to just go ahead and hop into the demo. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just disable the chat for right now and go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. Um, can everyone see my screen? I'm assuming, yes, perfect. So when you log into your Buffer account, this is going to be the first screen that you see, and this is your dashboard. So here in our dashboard, we can see all of our connected social channels. We can also manage our channels here by clicking on the man Manage Channels button. And in doing that, you can see all of your connected channels. If you see the green check mark here, that means they're good to go. Um, if you see a red exclamation point, usually that means you need to refresh that connection. We'll also just show you just a little error um, within the dashboard letting you know to refresh that connection as well. And if you ever wanted to remove a channel, there's a couple ways to do that. You can click on the three dots here and go to remove channel. If you ever need to refresh it, you can click the refresh connection channel. It'll also show you which plan that you're on. You also have the option to add or remove channels with this button here. And if you'd like to connect a new channel, you would click the blue connect channel button and you'll be redirected here. And you can click on the social platform um, where your social channel is on. So as you can see, I'm sure some of you have peeped YouTube. Um, we are really excited to be launching that. Um, I know that it's something customers have asked about for years now. So it's really exciting that we finally support YouTube channels on our platform. So uh, very, very jazzed about that. So now I'm going to go ahead and just go back to our main feature of Buffer, which is our publishing tool. We'll, we will help publish your social media posts automatically for you and just streamline your social media marketing strategy as much as possible. And so the first functionality, of course, is scheduling your posts. There's actually uh, quite a few different ways to do that. Um, the first way is through these randomized slots here. So I'm in our Twitter account. And if you decide to schedule a post through this method, you can just click on the time slot here and you can go ahead and craft your post. Um, the one caveat with this method is when you are crafting your post and you schedule it, it will only be scheduled for this particular channel. So again, I'm in my Twitter queue. When I create my post and I schedule it, this post will only go to Twitter. So um, a question that we often receive in the inbox is, you know, how do I schedule a post to go out to multiple social channels at once? Well, the way to do that is by clicking this blue create post button. And from there, you can see all of our social channels that we have connected. Because I'm in our Twitter queue, Twitter is selected by default. But if I wanted a post to go out to Instagram, um, and let's see, Facebook at the same time, I would just go ahead and select those accounts. And from there, I can start crafting my post. So um, for context, um, for our test account, we run a fictional uh, sneaker store. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of shoe and sneaker related content, but I can just put in something simple like shop our spring sale, add some emojis. And from here, um, I can add a video or a photo. So I'm going to start with an image and go ahead and upload my image. So we have like a, a few really cool tools within our composer. This is what this box is called, where you can create your content. And for example, like we have a editor built into the composer. So if you wanted to edit an image, you can go ahead and click on this pencil. And from there, your image will load. You'll have the option to crop it, rotate it, um, blur it, and so on and so forth. Um, and you can even enhance your image if you'd like. So I can go ahead and apply my changes, add it to the composer, and then that image will re-upload with the changes that I just made with the editing tool. Um, you also have the option for alt text for certain social channels. Um, and I will show you how to do that for Instagram as an example. I did wanna quickly plug um, some of our integrations in our composer. So you can see all of our integrations by clicking this drop down menu here. And we currently have integrations with Canva, Dropbox, Giphy, Google Drive, Google Photos, OneDrive, and Unsplash. 
Um, I definitely wanted to plug Canva very quickly. It's one of my favorite integrations that we have in our composer. I use Canva at work as well as outside of work and it's super slick. Um, basically to get it set up, you would just have to sign into Canva in a separate tab. Once you're fully signed in, exit out of it. And then when you're in the composer, as you just saw, I clicked on the Canva integration and Canva just loaded in my screen. So I don't have to worry about being redirected to a new tab or anything like that. And the great thing about this feature is you have pretty much all of the editing tools that you would have on canva.com. So you don't have to worry about running into certain limitations there. You can click on any of these pre-saved templates. You can change font sizes, the fonts themselves, colors, dates, um, what have you. And then once you're satisfied with your image, you can go ahead and click add to buffer. One quick tip I will share is um, we've had folks in the past ask, you know, I have my own branding kits saved on Canva or my own content. How can I access that? Well, quick way to access that is here in this menu, you're going to just scroll all the way down, click on projects. And from there, you can select anything that you've been working on, edit it here within the um, Canva integration, and then go ahead and add your content to Buffer. So I'm going to click the add to Buffer button. And as you can see, that template I just loaded up is automatically uploaded in the composer. Uh, so great. So now that you have crafted your posts, again, I selected my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook accounts. What I'm going to go go ahead and do from here is click the customize for each network button. And from there, I can just customize these posts for each social channel it's going to. And you can also see previews of your posts, which is pretty cool. Um, so I can see how this post is going to have this tweet is going to appear on Twitter. If I want to make any changes there, I might just go ahead and leave it as is. For Facebook, this is how the post will appear on Facebook. Um, I will show you quickly how um, links work. So if I wanted to add our pricing web page, we have our link shortener enabled. So this is why you see the shortened link. And again, you can see that link to populate in the preview. If you wanted to replace these images with the link attachment instead, you do have that option. So you would just go ahead and click replace with link attachment. And this is how the link will appear. Or you can toggle back to replace link attachment with an image or a video. And what's cool is once you enter in a link, um, sometimes we'll pre-populate any images on that link. So if I wanted to just you know, add our buffer logo, I can go ahead and click that. And then this is how our post will appear on Facebook. And finally, with Instagram, um, this is going to be a carousel post because I have more than one image um, uploaded here. We have the option to add a first comment if we'd like, um, a shop grid link if you are a business owner and you're selling your items and you want to have this post link to a uh, product URL on your website. So that way, you know, you can add your shop grid link in your Instagram bio so your audience can shop your Instagram feed essentially. And there's also geotagging available for your posts as well. Um, and we also have our hashtag manager. I love plugging this feature. It's available on all of our paid plans. Um, I reference this in like every call that we have, but I don't know if any of you can remember back in the day, like having to write down your most frequent, frequently used hashtags um, in your notes on your phone and then copying and pasting it within Instagram. Um, so sometimes that can get a little tedious. So that's the beauty of our hashtag manager. You can actually create hashtag groups of your most frequently used hashtags. You can also edit them at any time or delete them. There's no limit on how many hashtag groups that you can create. Um, so here we have quite a few that we often use. So you can just click the insert button and all of our hashtags in our hashtag group will be added to our Instagram post. And you can also see how many hashtags we have remaining because I believe that Instagram has a cap on 30. So that way you can keep track of how many hashtags that you have to ensure that you're not exceeding that limit. So from here, I'm satisfied with all of my posts. I'm gonna go ahead and schedule my posts. Um, I think I want them to go out on the 12th. You can even schedule the time you want them to go out. So I'll schedule them for 12.45 and boom. It's that simple. Now it's scheduling my posts and you can see the posts I just scheduled here, my Twitter queue, my Instagram queue, and finally my Facebook queue. So. Um, from here, you can also look at your posts uh, in the calendar. We do have a calendar feature. It will default to a weekly view. So again, that post I just created, it's showing here um, on Friday. 
You can also toggle to a monthly view and you can see any posts that we've previously published here that are grayed out. Any posts that we have scheduled will show in this calendar here. Um, in the calendar, it'll default to showing you all of your posts, but you can also filter it through these different um, post types. So you have drafts, scheduled posts, sent posts, any posts that are pending approval if you're working with a team on Buffer. Um, the calendar will also default to having all of your channels selected. So if you only wanted to see posts for you know, one or two social channels, um, you do have that option. So you would deselect all channels. And if I only wanted to see my Instagram posts and my tweets, I can go ahead and select both of those and I would only see posts for these two accounts in the calendar. Or you can just go back to having all of your channels toggled on. You can also create posts from the calendar view. When you click the blue create post button, it works similarly to how I just um, you know, showcased um, from the queue. But since we have all of our channels pre-selected, when you click the blue create post button, it'll also have pretty much all of your um, selected channels so select by default. Um, a quick tip for that is, again, if you only wanted a post to go to a particular social channel, let's say I just wanted my posts to go to Facebook and Twitter, I would select those, click create post, and from there, Twitter and Facebook is selected. You can also edit your posts within the calendar. So you can hover on a post that you have scheduled and you'll have the option to delete the post or edit. You can click edit and edit your posts as you like. You can also save your post as a draft or move your post to drafts if you want to work on it a little bit before officially scheduling your post for it to publish to your social channel. We do have a drag and drop feature. You just click drag and drop. So instead of this post going out on the 17th, I can drag and drop it so that it publishes on the 24th instead. We also support drag and drop feature in your respective social queues as well. So you would just click on a scheduled post click and drag and drop to a different time slot or even a different day. Um, so that's the gist of our calendar. Um, one important thing to note is our calendar will auto detect your current time zone. So if you have your posting schedule set to, you know, Eastern and your central, your posts in the calendar will display in central time, but they will still publish according to Eastern time. Sometimes we've gotten questions about, you know, why are my posts, you know, displaying in weird times, especially when you're looking at posts in a weekly view. Um, that's the reason why it's because uh, we auto detect your time zone in the calendar, but your posts will still publish according to your set posting schedule. Um, so I'm just going to show the posting schedule very quickly. Um, if you go to one of your queues and you click on settings and then click posting schedule, you'll have the ability to adjust your time zone here. If you need to pause your queue for any for any reason, you can pause it. So that means that any post that you have scheduled will not be published. Um, however, if you decide to resume your queue, you can go ahead and click this option. It'll resume your queue and then your post will begin um, publishing again. You can add new posting times, which will be added as slots in your queue. You can also edit the schedule. So for us, we have our posts going out on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, you can toggle these days on or off at any point in time you'd like. You can adjust these um, times here, which are the randomized um, time slots that you're seeing in your queue. And you can also clear your posting times anytime you would like. In the general settings here, you have a link shortening available. You can customize this option for any of your connected social channels. So we have no shortening for our Twitter account, um, but you can also enable Buffly or Bitly um, link shortening if you'd like. Um, you also have the ability to shuffle your queue if you want to just move your posts around and randomize that order. You can clear clean your queue if you have any failed posts and you don't want to go in and you know delete those failed posts one by one. Um, you can click this button and we'll clean it for you. Or if you just want to empty your queue and start all over, you have that option as well. So I'm um, just going to quickly pivot over to our content area. Um, a lot of folks have asked, you know, do you have a content library? I would like to say that our content areas definitely serves that purpose. And that's where you kind of jam on different ideas for feature um, social media posts. And we'll house it all here. And whenever you're ready to publish them, we make it as easy for you as possible. So from here, I'm going to click on this blue create idea button. And I'm just going to go ahead and just start coming up with some ideas for a future post. So um, let's see. Ideas for spring outfits that feature sneakers. And 
From here, we do have our AI assistant. We launched it a couple of months ago, which we're super excited about. It's powered by ChatGPT. I know anything AI related has been such a hot topic lately, and it's cool that we support it here in Buffer. Um, depending on your plan, we'll allot you a certain number of credits, and you can use those credits to um, enable our AI assistant to help you generate content for future posts. So I'm gonna click on our AI assistant here. Um, I can have our AI assistant generate posts, uh, generate posts based on the prompt that I just entered, rephrase, summarize, expand, and so on. So I'm just going to start off with generating a post, and it will generate a post um, with some cool ideas for spring outfits that feature sneakers. So I'm just going to wait a couple seconds. Uh, let's see what our AI assistant comes up with. Hopefully, we have a lot to work off of. Great. So we have quite a few outfit ideas. We have 10 different ideas. You can leave this as is, you can edit it accordingly, um, or you can just go ahead and continue on with creating your content. If you want to upload a photo or a video, you can do that here. You still have access to all of the integrations that I shown in the composer. I'm going to go ahead and use Unsplash. So I'm just going to put in like spring outfit with sneakers, search, and I think this is a great fit. So I know I had to click that and our image is uploaded here. So from there, I can click to save this idea or if I just wanted to go ahead and create a post, I had that option. But for now, I'm just going to save this idea. So in the future, if I ever wanted to come back and schedule a post, I would just click on the idea we have saved, click on create post. I can select which social channel I want my idea to go to. And so in this case, I chose Twitter. This is going to show a preview of how the tweet will look, and then once I'm satisfied with everything, I mean, this is, exceeds the character limit, so maybe I'll just go ahead and select Facebook instead. I can just go ahead and add this post to my queue, and I can keep my idea that I just created, or I can discard it. If you have a lot of ideas here and you want to keep things clean, you can probably just go ahead and discard the idea since you already scheduled the post, or if you just want to keep the idea for personal reasons, you can go ahead and do that too. So I'll just keep that idea there. So that's a quick overview of our content area. And the last thing I wanted to show you um, with our publishing tool is our campaigns feature. So if you're trying to track the performance of your social media posts for a particular event or a sale or an initiative that's important to your organization, this is a great feature that you can leverage. Um, so we have this campaign here that we previously had. You can also create a campaign by clicking the blue create campaign button. You can add a name. You can even assign it a color to kind of keep things a little bit organized and save it. From here, I'm just going to go back and click on our spring campaign. So we don't have any posts scheduled, but if you had any posts scheduled here, you would see them in this view. You can also see any posts that we have published. So these are all of our published posts for these campaigns. You can see which social account that they went to. You can also see the posts themselves. Um, if we had any clicks, reactions, just some basic analytic information there. Any saved drafts will display here and any posts that require approvals, if you're working with the team, will display for the campaign as well. So um, I think it's a really great feature um, when you're scheduling posts within the composer, you can also select your campaign too. So here I click the blue create post button, then I can select our campaign and go ahead and create our post and it will be associated with this campaign that we have running. So I think this is a great time to pivot to our analytics tools. So um, here you're going to click on analytics. It'll redirect you to the homepage, which will just show you a general overview of the performance of your connected social channels. It'll also show you your recent posts and an overview of your social channels, as well as any recent custom reports that you've created. So um, with our analytics tool, we support Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Shopify accounts. We get this question asked a lot, do you support TikTok analytics right now? We do not, sadly, due to some API limitations, but hopefully that's something that we'll be able to support in the future. I do believe our product team is currently exploring that. No ETAs as of yet, but as of right now, we don't support TikTok analytics. However, um, one really great thing I do wanna mention is when you connect your social channels to Buffer, you don't have to worry about starting from scratch when it comes to analytics. We'll actually backfill data for you according to each social platform's guidelines. So I know in the case of Facebook and Instagram, we will backfill six months worth of data for your posts. For Twitter, it's 28 days. 
for LinkedIn, it's also six months with the exception of video posts. And that way, when you connect your channels to Buffer, you'll already have some data to go off of. One caveat is sometimes um, we will update data in batches, which are usually in 24 hour periods. So let's say if you create an account today, you sign up for a trial and you're wondering like, why aren't my analytics displaying? Give us about 24 hours and your information will populate within analytics. And our team also has the capability of backfilling data for you. So if you ever you know, need us to do that free after the 24 hour period, we're more than happy to do that just to ensure that you get the latest data showing up in analytics. So I'm gonna go over to our Facebook page. Um, I believe we're gonna have one, yeah. So if you have multiple um, social channels with on one platform, such as multiple Facebook pages or Instagram accounts, you can click this drop-down menu and toggle to the account you'd like to see metrics for. We'll show you the performance of your channel, average performance, metric insights. You can even toggle to these different data points that we have here and also compare to a previous period. I think we we're pretty active last summer. So um, you do have the option to um, filter your uh, data depending on if you just want to view data for this past month, week, or even a custom date range. So I'm going to go back to last summer, starting in June and going to, let's see, August 31st. I'm going to apply the date range. And from here, I can see the performance of our account and posts for that date range. Um, you can see the export as option here. If you wanna export the data as a CSV file, you have that option, or you can export it as an image. I'm sure you've also seen these plus signs next to these charts. Um, we do support custom reports for our analytics tools. So if you wanted to create a custom report to send to your team, you can just click this plus sign. These are the existing reports that we've previously created, or you can create a new report if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just add this to our end of summer report there. And in a bit, I'll show you what our reports feature looks like. So you can look at a breakdown of your posts. We'll show you a post summary, um, hashtag performance. You can see how your frequently used hashtags are performing with your audience. You can even see post insights. So here we have like post clicks, reactions, impressions, our reach, engagement rate, and so on. It defaults by impressions, but you can also sort your posts by these different data points. And as, as I mentioned before, you can add these charts to a report. We have our audience tool where you can see a breakdown of your audience, such as general demographics. So you can see your top gender and age, your top cities and countries that you're most popular with. So um, I think that we have more detailed breakdown with Instagram because we're a little bit more active on it, but it's great that you have this information readily available to you just to see, you know, which countries you're most popular with, um, the age range you're most popular with, gender breakdowns, and so on. Um, for Instagram especially, but for most social channels, but we often get this question in relation to Instagram, and that's, you know, when's the best time for me to post? That's where our answers tab comes in. We do have this tab available for pretty much all of these social channels that we support on analytics. However, this particular chart I'm going to show you in a couple seconds is only available for Instagram right now. So when you go to the answers tab, based on you know the performance of your um, posts and the type of content you're posting, we'll be able to tell you, you know when's the best time for you to post, which in our case is 2 p.m. on a Monday. The best type a post for us is an image and the best frequency for us to post is once a day. So with this interactive graph, as you can see, um, I can hover on any of these days and I'll be able to see when is the best time for me to post. So on a Tuesday, somewhere between uh, looks like maybe 7 to 8 a.m. is the best time for us to post. Whereas on Saturday, um, usually around that time range would work for us too. And we'll also like share some tips. So yeah, 8 a.m. on a Saturday or 2 p.m. on a Wednesday is a great time to post and kind of increases our chances of getting more engagement with our audience. Um, for us, Fridays, we tend to get the most engagement. You can even uh, hover over these different dates to see the percentage of your engagement rate. For us, the best type of content for us to post is in image. Um, and we see that we have a 7.49% engagement rate with images as opposed to videos where it's 6.45%. Um, we don't post carousels very often, but the more diverse your content is, the more robust um, these answers will be for your social media strategy. And you can also see the best um, frequency to post. And it'll tell you, you know, again, the percentage of your engagement rate depending on these different data points. So 
Finally, I'm just going to toggle over to our reports feature. As I shared before, you can click on those plus signs and add them to an existing report or create a new one. Um, any reports you've made recent changes to will default towards the top. So I'm gonna click on our end of summer report and here we have our title, we have our dates. You can add a report summary if you'd like or an image. And then all of the charts that we've added are associated with this custom report. And you can see all of these charts here. And you can also see which um, social channels these are for. So for example, it's for Facebook. We have quite a few for Facebook here. Oh, we had some for Instagram too. Yeah, we have some here for Instagram. And then once you're satisfied with your custom report, you can go ahead and click export as a PDF file. So I know that I'm kind of going at uh, lightning speed, but I did want to quickly pivot to our engagement tool because I think it's a really great feature to enable, um, you know, if, especially if you're someone who gets a lot of comments on your posts. Um, again, before I get too deep into this, access to our analytics and engagement tools is available on all of our paid plans. So it's something to note, You, if you're subscribed to a paid plan or if you're on a trial, you'll have access to all of these features, which is great. So um, here in our engagement tool, essentially what our engagement tool is, it, is a, it allows you to interact with your audience um, through comments um, all in one place, as opposed to doing it natively on the social platform. Right now, our engagement tool only supports Instagram and Facebook. We don't support any other social channels at the moment. However, if you'd like to see other social platforms be supported, I will be sure to plug our feature request form because we definitely, you know, take your feedback into consideration. We want you to get the most out of offer as possible. So that could be something we potentially add as a feature in the future. So in our case, we have 18 unanswered comments. We'll also label those comments for you. Um, if you have any negative comments, it'll be a red exclamation point. Anything order related, it'll be a green cart. Anything question related, you'll see a orange question mark. And you can go ahead and toggle to any of your posts that have unanswered comments and you know follow up with your audience. So for this particular post, we have three unanswered comments. Here's one that we haven't responded to. We can just go ahead and say thanks add an emoji, click send, and we just responded to um, one of our followers here. And here in the conversation bubble, we see that we had three unanswered comments and now it's down to two. And you'll see this number go down as well. And you can just go through any of your posts. This is our um, all the posts we shared on Instagram. You can go to any that have unanswered comments and follow up there. Um, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward, very intuitive, very easy to use. Um, for Facebook, we don't get many um, comments on our posts at all, but um, you can always toggle to your Facebook or Instagram accounts and view all in one place any unanswered comments, easily follow up and interact with your audience and make it as make that process as seamless as possible because I know it can be a little bit overwhelming at times. So um, the last thing I'm going to show you today, since we are at the top of the hour, is our start page. We get a lot of questions about our start page. I think it's a really awesome feature. And essentially what our start page is, it's a microsite where you can showcase your brand. I like to think of it as a happy medium between Linktree and Squarespace, because I love both tools, but Linktree can sometimes be a little bit bare and Squarespace can sometimes be a little robust. And if you don't have like a lot of experience with like web design and stuff, and I know that they have some templates, like it can be a little intimidating. So I like to think as of our start page as a, a happy medium between the two. So again, like we have our fictional uh, sneakers account, um, you can customize your start page however you like. We have all these different types of content blocks. You can edit them easily by clicking and dragging and dropping. Um, for our profile uh, content block, block, for example, you can upload an image, you can add alt text, you can add your business name, um, a slogan if you have one. You can even customize your headers. Um, you can go back to any of these other content blocks. I love our updates um, feature. So you can see a preview of how your uh, start page looks. So we have a updates feed. So any posts that you've shared from Buffer um, or your most recent posts will display here. So anyone who's navigating to your start page will be able to see your most um, recent posts. We also have um, button links and social links as well. So this is a button link to our fictional website. We have a YouTube video here, an image for our social links. I wanted to show that really quickly. If you click on this content block, it'll show you your social links. You can add in your links here. And we pretty much have every social link available. Like 
WhatsApp, Mastodon, Patreon, Twitch, Bandcamp, Discord, GitHub, and so on. Um, and the reason why we support all these um, different social links that you can add to your start page is because we've seen folks from so many different backgrounds, so many different industries leverage their start pages in a variety of ways. And it's been really cool to see from restaurants to um, you know podcasters, writers, um, YouTubers, and other content creators, and so on. The sky is the limit. So we wanted to make this as accessible um, as possible to anyone who would just like to have a microsite for their brand. And from there, you can also see statistics to see how your start page is performing, like how many views did you have today, this week, all time. You can also see which links have the most clicks on your start page. You can also see the links for your socials that have um, clicks and how many. And you can also customize your domain for your start page. You can name it or for whatever reason, if you want to um, publish your start page at any point in time, you have that option as well. Um, as far as our start page goes for pricing that is available, it's priced the same way as a social channel. Uh, but yeah, I know that I went through everything super quickly. So I feel like this is a good point in time to just pivot over to our live Q&A portion of the call. Um, I'll have my teammate D from our customer advocacy team who will be joining and helping me answer your questions today. D, if you want to quickly introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, just uh, Daniel's the full name, but everyone just calls by the letter D. Um, and yeah, I'm just on the advocacy team and here to help just answer some of these questions. Awesome. Thanks, Dee. Um, well, I think we're in a good spot to go ahead and hop in. Um, I'm just going to quickly answer Emily's question. Um, you mentioned I, if I could speak slower. I know I speak really fast. Um, so it's like one of those habits where you're not really aware until someone's like, hey, you're talking really fast. So I apologize for that. Um, we do send out uh, links to our recording after these calls. So if it helps, you know, you can always like jump through certain portions or you can um, slow down the call. I know some folks like to slow down um, the, the speed of certain videos or speed it up. Um, according to your personal preference. So it is an option that's available to you. But Emily, if there's any portion during the demo that you felt like I went too quickly through or I spoke too quickly through that you had any particular questions about, feel free to drop it here and I'll be happy to answer. I see, I see uh, Fernaz um, raised his hand. Um, if you have any questions, Farnaz, would you mind popping them over in the Q&A area? Because that's where Dee and I will be looking to answer your questions. Um, I see that Regina, both Regina and Rewa asked um, about sending a link to a recording. Yes, as I mentioned, I will be sending out a link to a recording. We're also live streaming this on YouTube. So if you go to our YouTube channel and go to the live tab, you'll see a live recording of this call and it'll always be available on YouTube. So you can watch it on demand whenever you'd like. And um, we also send out links to recording um, or to our getting started playlist on YouTube by email. So you should be receiving that um, today and then we'll, uh, you will receive a follow-up email tomorrow directly from Zoom. Great questions. Um, I have a question here from Asha. Is hashtag manager available on the free version and can you use it for LinkedIn as well as Instagram? Uh, so the hashtag manager feature isn't available on the free plan um, and it's only available for Instagram on the paid plans. Um, so just a heads up on that. Awesome. Um, we had a couple of questions about start page from both Anne and Kanika. Um, Anne asks, is the start page meant to replace a link tree? And Kanika asks, what is the start page for again, like a second website? So the start page is essentially, again, it's a microsite where you can showcase your brand. Um, it's similar to Linktree, and I, I do enjoy Linktree, but it's a little bit more robust. Whereas like with Linktree, you're just seeing like direct links to, it could be like your website or if you're selling something, your socials and so on. With Start Page, you have that and more. You can add in um, videos uh, to YouTube if that's relevant to your brand at all. You can add images. You can design your page if you'd like. So it's something that's a little bit more curated to your brand. It's essentially like a little, a mini website, so to speak, for your brand. So depending on your social media strategy, it might be something that is 
you know, it's going to be conducive to helping you achieve your goals, or maybe you might not need it at this moment. Um, for context, like I work with a nonprofit outside of Buffer. And so like, we're currently creating our start page to help like raise awareness for like events that we're running here in Chicago, um, any like important like tech related resources and things like that, and just kind of like showcase our our own brand. So, you know, you can leverage it in a myriad of ways, but that's essentially what purpose of our start page is. But great questions, Anna Kanika. I mean, I have a question here from Emma. Um, for LinkedIn, will carousel posts be available soon? Uh, so you can publish a post with up to nine images um, in a single LinkedIn post. However, uh, due to API limitations, so when you're posting natively to LinkedIn, it's going to be different than posting to LinkedIn through third-party apps like Buffer and others. Uh, so this is done through their API. And with their API, uh, we aren't able to publish LinkedIn carousel posts, which are done using um, PDF, I believe. So I hope that helps answer that question. For sure. Uh, let's see. Chuck asked in analytics, is there a way to see more than the top five hashtags? Um, at this time, we'll only show you the top five hashtags um, that are performing the best with your social media posts. Um, I don't think we have like particular rationale for that. We just want to kind of like keep it as concise as possible. We felt like five was a great number. So there isn't a way to see more than five right now. Um, I don't know if we plugged our feature request form quite yet, um, but we can drop it here in our chat. So if there's any features that you would like to see, definitely drop your ideas there and our product team will take a look. But great question, Chuck. Um, let's see, Stacy asks, is there a way to schedule stories to Facebook and Instagram? Um, we don't support Facebook stories right now. However, we do support stories for Instagram. So I'll just quickly share my screen again. I'm going to head over to publishing. One important thing to note is when it comes to uh, scheduling stories for Instagram, that feature is available on all of our paid plans. So if you navigate over to your Instagram queue, and you'll see an option for stories. You can click on stories and from there you can click in this box and you can start dragging and dropping your files or you can select a file that you have saved on your computer and just start scheduling your posts. So just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to select a random image from Unsplash. I can add a note here if I want. This is just like a note to myself um, as I start uh, scheduling this, my story within Instagram because right now, with our Instagram story scheduling, your story will be scheduled as a reminder. So essentially how reminders work is, let's say you wanted your story to be published later this afternoon at 6 p.m. Central, um, we'll send you a push notification to your phone saying, hey, it's a reminder to publish your story. When you go into the Buffer app, we'll already have everything saved for you. So it'll, when you press um, the you know share story button within the, buffer app, excuse me, you'll be redirected to Instagram. And then from there, you can start scheduling your um, Instagram story. And so with this notes feature, if there's anything important you want to remember, like you can reference to this if you'd like, um, or you can go ahead and, you know, continue to schedule your story. So um, you can also look at a preview to see how it'll display on Instagram, if that's helpful. Um, but yes, in short, we do support Instagram stories um, with our reminders feature. And um, we don't have, again, we don't support Facebook stories, but hopefully that's something that we'll be able to in the future. So thanks, Jason. Um, I have a question from Chuck. Is there any way to programmatically API, API add to queues? Um, so I, I'm having a little trouble trying to understand the question specifically, but um, we do have an API and we do work with, let's say, um, other apps like Zapier or If This Then That, where... Let's say you do something in Google Sheet, and then that will trigger an action to buffer. Um, so in that sense, uh, these types of things are possible with um, Zapier, Zapier or Feedly or If This Then That. But if you have a specific um, case, uh, definitely feel free to email us at hello at buffer.com. And uh, we can definitely walk through that with you, whether it's possible or not. Um, so I hope that helps. But if not, definitely email us. Um, and then I have another question here from Kavita. Uh, do you have a media library where I can save photos that I want to reuse for future posts? Um, so that would be um, 
the content tab within publish. Um, that's a great area where you can create your ideas, upload a photo, and then it's, it's always going to be there. So from there, you can then either add it to the queue of any social channel that you want. Um, we also, once a update is published, and let's say it has media, it goes into the sent post tab as well. So from there, you can also reshare updates, but there are some limitations with that as far as uh, duplicate posts and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So the content area and the ideas area is definitely the best for that. Um, Emma asks, will a carousel PDF for LinkedIn be available soon where you can swipe between pictures instead of an overview? Um, as of right now, like I'm sure as you know, we don't support um, carousel slash PDF posts for LinkedIn. Um, and I don't believe it's in the pipeline at the moment. So because of that, I don't have an ETA to, to share on when it will be available. I did drop our feature request link in the chat. And um, that's a good place to you know share your feedback, anything that you'd like to see. And um, hopefully that's something we can support. I do think this is a good point in time to quickly share a link to our transparent product roadmap. So if there's any features that you're interested in seeing, it might already be in the pipeline and you can kind of see um, developments in real time um, with updates from our product team um, all in one place on Trello. So I just shared the link to that Trello board, which is really cool. And you can also um, upvote any features that you want to see too. And uh, based on your feedback and also um, API limitations, uh, that helps our product team determine what to build out next. Yeah, and just to add a caveat for that specific case, I do believe it's a, it's an API limitation. So that's something that LinkedIn has placed as a limitation on us. So that it wouldn't be something that we can create until they change things on their end and allow third-party apps to uh, do so as well. So just a heads up. Um, when scheduling from Emily, we have a question. Uh, when scheduling a campaign, how do you set it up so that there are different content for different days? Um, when scheduling a campaign, sorry, I kind of answered this uh, without reading it beforehand. Uh, how, when scheduling a campaign, how do you set it up so that there are different content for different days? Um, I think what you're alluding to is creating the different content for different days. Um, how do you set up different content for different days? Well, when you're scheduling the content out, um, you're going to pick the either add to queue. So there's a bunch of options. When you create the, uh, the content, you can either add it to queue, schedule the post, share now. Um, so there's a bunch of different options. So when, um, when you're creating the update or the content, um, it's going to be up to you depending on where where and when you want to share it to do so. So that's all going to happen in the composer view. Um, but I'm not sure that helps answer the question entirely. So just let me know if not. <laughs> awesome. Um, Lori asks, how do you include all text for graphics and images when creating a post? So I will just quickly show how to do that. So um, for the post that I scheduled earlier during the demo, this is our tweet that we scheduled. So a way to add alt text is super easy. Um, my apologies for not sharing it during the demo. Is in order to do that, you would just click on the image included in your post. And then from here, you can add alt text. And there's a character limit of 1,000 characters. So you can just add um, hey, sneakers. I'm sure it's very vague, but just for the sake of demonstrative purposes, um, you can go ahead and add your alt text there. And then for the second image, it works the same way. Click on the image. And then from here, you can add a description um, for alt, alt text and then go ahead and save it. Save your post and that's it. So um, thank you so much for asking that. That's actually like really important because of course you wanna make your post as accessible as possible to your audience. So great question, Lori. Um, Kavita asks, are we able to categorize our posts by color labels? Um, at this time, there isn't a way to do that on Buffer. With campaigns, like you can add color labels for individual campaigns, but not for individual posts in those campaigns or just posts in general. So our apologies for that. But no, we do not. There isn't a way to categorize posts by color labels at the moment. Uh, we have a, another question here from Matt Vinsky. Uh, do you have any options for managing reviews? 
Um, so the engagement portion of our tool is going to, at the moment, just be for Instagram and Facebook um, and just comments right now. So um, I th maybe you're alluding to like Google business reviews or, or any other form. So um, if it's not in Instagram and it's not a general comment on an update or Facebook general comment, um, it's not something that you're able to do. Um, Audrey asked for the campaign manager, are you able to put multiple tags in a post? For example, we tag the campaign, what product is in the post, if the assets are UCG or brand assets, et cetera. Um, there isn't a way to add multiple tags to a post using our campaigns feature. Um, so it's something that we don't support at the moment, sadly, but I do think it would be really cool if we supported it. And I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but definitely shoot that over to our product team. Um, we're trying to think through ways to um, add some more like agency friendly features within our platform. And I think, feel like that would be a really great one. So uh, thanks for that question, Audrey. Um, Jacqueline asked, um, I want to add more than one of my Facebook pages to Buffer, but it doesn't show up when I'm in Buffer. Do you know why? More often than not, when I've seen this crop up, it's usually related to your permissions within your business integration settings on Facebook. So if they're not, if all of those permissions aren't checked, if you're trying to connect a Facebook or Instagram channel and it's not showing, like it's not listed to connect to Buffer, Nine times out of 10, that's usually why. Um, if you're on the new Meta Business Suite, there's kind of a, a little, it's a little nuanced trying to like find those settings. So if you're having trouble finding them um, on your own in Facebook, shoot us an email at hello at buffer.com and we'll definitely point you in the right direction so we can help you get that account connected. Um, and Nordia asked, do you have an app? What can you do with the app? Fantastic question, Nordia. Yes, we do have an app. Um, it's available for both iOS and Android. Um, you can go into the Google Play Store or the um, App Store and download it. Um, I don't know if it's going to show up very well um, you know, on screen. I have the Buffer app on my phone. So it's really cool. You'll have like pretty much all the same, like most of the same functionalities as you would on the web app, AKA our website. So you'll have the ability to schedule your posts. You can also see a calendar view of the posts that you have scheduled. You can toggle between um, your connected social channels to view posts in there um, in those respective queues. You have the content area, so you can also create and save ideas within the app. Um, you can look at an overview. So we'll show you very basic analytics within the app. If you want to see more specific um, post insights and things like that, our web app would be the better option of the two. But we at least will show just a general breakdown of how your posts are performing. So you have some access to analytics within the app, and you can even create and schedule campaigns within the mobile app too. So all the big and, and important uh, functionalities that are available on our web app is also available on our mobile app. You can add channels in the mobile app. You can adjust your plans. You can customize your start pages, your posting schedules, and so on, um, all available within the app. Um, it doesn't really show up well, um, but that's how it appears. I have mine on dark mode because I just have dark mode available, uh, enabled for my phone in general. Um, yeah, you can even see posts and anything that requires approval if you're working on a team. So it's really robust. I really recommend our mobile app if you want to like have something available on the go. And if you want to use our reminders feature for um, Instagram stories, it's important to have the Buffer mobile app downloaded on your phone, but I'm really happy that you asked that question, Aria, because we absolutely do have an app. So thanks. Um, so we have another question here from Woot Van Ender Castle. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, I was using the free version for now and I wanted to test the essentials to use the engagement option. If I pay for one channel, will it, will it only be available for that one channel I pay for or all my channels? So um, on our paid channels, there are no free channels. So if you have if you're on the free plan, you're allowed three channels. But as soon as you want to have the paid features, um, it's going to cost a certain amount per channel. Um, the great news is, though, is that instead of paying to, to give it a try, you can definitely just start a free trial. Um, so we offer those on our pricing page at buffer.com. Um, so definitely jump in and give that a try. If you've already tried it and maybe you didn't realize or, or triggered it and didn't realize, 
um, just email us at hello at buffer.com and we'll be happy to extend it for another seven days. Um, that way you can get a, um, a good idea of how engagement works as well and, and then make a decision from there. So, um, Ariana asks, can you please talk a little bit about the post-approval process for Teams? Um, I would be more than happy to do that. Um, I'll just quickly show you how Teams work on Buffer. Share my screen. Great. So if you're on a team plan or an agency plan, you'll essentially be able to invite as many team members as you'd like. We don't have any upper limits for that. And if you want to see your team, you can go ahead and click your avatar, scroll to team. And from there, you'll see all of your connected team members. If you don't have any quite yet, you can just click invite a new user. You can enter in their name, their email address. If you want them to have admin access, you can toggle this on. And essentially with admin access, they'd be able to manage channels. So they'd be able to connect channels, remove channels, refresh and reauthorize channels and so on. And they can also publish content without your approval. Um, and if you don't want them to add admin access, of course, you can toggle that off. You can assign channels to a user. So we have all of these connected channels. Um, you can assign one, multiple, or all if you'd like. So. I'll just select our Facebook channel for now, and then you can set the access level. So with full posting access, that team member will have the ability to schedule posts without your approval, or if it requires your approval, you would just click approval, approval required. So for any content um, that they schedule, it won't be able to be published without you physically approving that post first. And then if you wanted to, you can assign more channels and so on. So I'm going to go back to our dashboard. But the way that approvals work, I don't think that we have any scheduled for approvals right now. But let's say, in your imagination here, if someone scheduled a tweet and it required our approval, it would show under this approval tab. And then you would see the posting question. And you'll have the ability to edit the post or approve it. Um, there isn't a particular rejection button, nor is there a notation feature. We've had a couple of questions about that. Like, can I you know, leave notes and share feedback and then send it back to that team member? We don't support that quite yet. However, um, if you're satisfied with the post, you can approve it so it's scheduled. Or if you need that team member to make any changes, don't approve the post. It'll stay here in the approvals tab. And then you can just let them know to go ahead and make any required edits that they need to before you can approve the post. So that's a general overview of how it works. It's pretty, um, I would say pretty intuitive for the most part. Um, but it, again, um, with approvals and just like generally working with the team on Buffer that is available on our team and agency plans. Um, Carrie asks two questions. Will Buffer have hashtag recommendations for keywords? And two, analytics, LinkedIn is my big audience. Will you have recommended best time to post? Um, Right now, we don't have um, hashtag rec recommendations for keywords. I don't believe that's in the pipeline right now either. Um, again, feel free to share that feature with us if you'd like to see it. When it comes to the best time to post, I know I shared showed the answers tab early on in the demo. We do have that tab available for um, all of the social channels that we support. However, when it comes to the best time to post, um, for that particular graph, it's only available for Instagram right now. So I believe like generally speaking, when it comes to the answers tab for any social accounts besides Instagram, we'll just show you uh, general information such as like the best data post, um, the best type of post and the best frequency to post. But we wouldn't be able to tell you exactly like the best time to post, but we will at least, you know, be able to break down like the best day and uh, the best frequency and, and so on. Um, Bernaz asked, if I have four clients, do I need to have a Facebook account for each client or how do Facebook groups work? Um, to make sure I'm following along here, um, if you have client, four clients and they each have their own Facebook accounts, you can connect those to Buffer without having to worry about having multiple Buffer accounts managing all of these social channels at once. Um, as far as connecting a Facebook group is concerned, um, I do know it's a little bit more nuanced than connecting like other social channels, including like Facebook pages. So um, Nate, if you wouldn't mind like dropping a link to like, you know, how to connect a Facebook group in our chat, that would definitely be helpful. And that'll be like a step in the right direction for that. But I hope I answered your question on that for now. If I missed anything, let me know. Um, but yeah, if you have multiple clients that you are working with, you can add all of their um, social channels to one singular buffer account. 
Um, and asks, where does the start page appear to the customers? So if you have a start page, we will uh, provide you with the link. Um, I believe Lori asked with the start page, can you customize the URL? So I'm gonna try to like answer two questions at once. If you have, you, mean, you will have a URL once you publish your start page. And essentially what you can do with that is you can share that page domain with your audience. And there's a couple ways to do that. Um, I'll just share, <laughs> I keep sharing my screen, but it's easier this way. Um, well, I think it's sharing now. So when you're in your start page, you can actually copy your link. So when you click this um, option, it'll automatically copy the, the URL for your start page, and then you can share it to your social channels. So we have like Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter, and Facebook. That'll be shared with your audience. And then so that way they can access your start page at any time. If you're curious to see how our start page um, appears on your device, I will just, um, sorry about that. Um, cancel, apologies. I will share that in the chat after I'm done um, sharing my screen, just so you have an idea of how it'll appear. Um, but yes, um, all that is to say is um, once they have that URL, you can see how your audience will be able to, of course, access your start page. And I will share our URL so you can see how the start page will appear. Um, so yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, and then again, Lori asked with the start page, can you customize URL? You can, if you go to your settings, this is the page domain that we have here, um, but we do have some guidance on how to set up your um, custom domain, but we do have that option available for start pages. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm going to plug our um, start page link so you can see what that looks like on your device. Um, Katarina asked, how much does a start page cost? So the start page, is priced the same way as our um, social channels are under our under our new pricing structure. So for example, if you're on the essentials plan, the monthly essentials plan, each social channel you connect is $6 a month. So the start page will also be $6 a month. Um, you know, and the way it works is so on depending on your plan. So if you're on the team plan, it's $12 per social channel a month, start page will be $12. Um, a month as well. And the only caveat is with the agency plan, it starts at 10 social channels. So if you plan to add more than that, I feel like that's the most advantageous plan for you. You can invite as many team members as you'd like, and it helps you save money in the long run. So when you exceed 10 channels and the way that it's priced is 10 channels on the monthly plan starts at 120 a month or 1200 for the year. And if you wanted to add more than 10 channels, any subsequent channel that you connect will be priced similar, similarly to essentials. So if you're on the monthly agency plan, instead of paying like $12 per social channel a month, you will pay $6 per social channel a month. So you would save some money there. Um, but that's how much start page costs. We um, price it the same way we would a regular social channel. Wait, sorry, I just <laughs> rapidly through those. Um, looks like we have like five more left. Yeah, so uh, Kavita, for the best time to post, is there a way to, sorry, I've been typing away some of these uh, answers, but for the best time to post, is there a way to automatically schedule a post at the best time, or do I need to manually schedule it at the time based on what's in our analytics? So I believe you're going to have to uh, manually set this up, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, Essence, I, I think that's the case, though, um, and uh, so this will be changing, you know, based on what you're doing. So sometimes it, it might be actually worth trying other things, um, whether it's changing the frequency, uh, changing the time. Um, so once you kind of try a bunch of different things and then you got a good little baseline of, of data to look at, um, you can start kind of using that feature. I mean, use it right away, but um, that's one way to do it. And then basically, yeah, you'll have to jump over to publish um, to your posting schedule and then set those times up yourself. Cool. Um, Elizabeth asks, also, can you dive a little deeper into team roles and the approval process for posts? Um, I won't share my screen again because I um, just did a quick overview of how that works, but I do think this is a good opportunity to plug how agencies work on Buffer. Um, I don't know if uh, Nate will beat me to the punch on that, but we do like go into further detail on how that works. So you have some visuals and like a general overview of how um, teams work on Buffer and also how like agencies level leverage Buffer um, as a social media management tool. So yeah, uh, let's see. I don't think that that link has been shared. So I'll go ahead and get that um, 
those links shared in our chat. So that way um, you'll have access to that information. So that's using uh, Buffer as an agency. And um, I think that pretty much comprises like all of the important like team features as well. So I hope that's helpful. Um, Emma, sorry, I did not understand the carousel for LinkedIn. It is and will not be able be available on Buffer or any other platform. Um, so just to clarify, in terms of like carousel PDF posts, we don't support it at the moment. It's not in the pipeline. As uh, Dee shared earlier, it is an API limitation. So unfortunately, with these social media platforms, we are at the mercy of their API. There's just certain things that we're just technically not able to build out quite yet. And unfortunately, this is one of them. However, if LinkedIn changes their API where it enables us to support that tool, we'd definitely be happy to add that in the pipeline. But for right now, now, since it is a limitation, um, we don't support it. And um, at least for the foreseeable future until the API changes, like we won't be able to. So I hope that clears things up a bit. A uh, question from Farnaz, uh, or can I link all my clients all under my Facebook account if they need just publishing on Instagram? Um, so I'm going to try to do my best at understanding this, but um, it sounds like you're hoping to connect your clients Facebook accounts or Instagram accounts um, in order to do that um, in order to connect first of all you're not allowed to you're not able to due to again API limitations connect Facebook profiles um, you can connect Facebook pages and you can connect Instagram business accounts and creator accounts as well um, in order to do that you're going to need to have a Facebook profile that has um, a specific role uh, for the Facebook page that you want to connect. So as long as your Facebook profile has access to this um, page, you're able to connect it. If you're going to connect an Instagram account, you're going to need to have a Facebook profile that has that um, specific role for the Facebook page that is also connected to the business Instagram account. So um, I don't know if that helps answer your question. It's probably one of the most uh, complicated topic that we come across is Instagram and Facebook connections. So I definitely highly recommend uh, you email us at hello at buffer.com and we can just kind of unpack your situation a little further and um, help with uh, help with getting things set up. Awesome. And our last question um, from Chuck. Sometimes my queues show um, zero posts scheduled, even when there are posts in the queue. Page refresh seems to fix the problem. Any way to fix this? Since this issue seems to be more account specific, if you could email us at hello at buffer.com, assuming you haven't already, Chuck, um, you know, feel free to do so. And then our team will be happy to, to take a deeper look just in case it's like a bug or something like that. Um, but yeah, we'd be happy to, you know, take a look and make sure things are up and running for you. Yeah, that is our last question. The end of an era. Um, it has been such a pleasure, uh, you know, just facilitating these calls. It's been a pleasure, like working alongside, you know, my teammates who have uh, contributed so much uh, to these calls and were pivotal in, in making these happen for all of you. And thank you all so much for your thoughtful and engaging questions. It's been a pleasure. Um, again, a recording is available since this is live streamed on YouTube. And also hello to everyone who's watching on YouTube. Um, you can view it at any time on demand. Apologies for speaking so quickly. Um, it's it's a habit. I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, you can slow down the video um, if that helps at all. If there's anything that we can help and expound upon, send us an email at hello at buffer.com. But again, thank you to each and every one of you. Um, you have made this experience so just rewarding. And I, I feel like that's an understatement, but I hope you all have a great rest of your mornings, afternoons, evenings, and, and weekend ahead. So thank you all.